Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English. In today's lesson, we're going to keep talking about connected speech. And that is linking sounds together when you speak English to help you sound more relaxed and natural. So what is connected speech? Hmm. Connected speech is spoken language that is continuous. The English spoken by native speakers in normal conversations. We speak quickly without pausing between words. And there is often a huge difference between the way that words are pronounced in isolation, on their own, and the way that words are pronounced naturally in a sentence using connected speech. When words come together in a sentence, they often affect each other. Words push together, some sounds disappear, or they change completely. Do you want to grab a coffee? Do you want to grab a coffee? <laughs> so listen again without connected speech. Do you want to grab a coffee? It's really choppy, not like a native speaker would say it at all. Do you want to grab a coffee? Do you want to grab a coffee? That's much better. Using connected speech, you'll sound more natural and relaxed. And by learning and understanding how to use connected speech, you'll not only improve your pronunciation, but you'll also train your brain and your ears to understand native English speakers more easily when they speak. You see, connected speech and linking sounds are exactly what allows native English speakers to talk so fast. Spoken English is not always this clear. <laughs> Most English speakers just don't speak as clearly as I do in these videos. In fact, I don't always speak this clearly either. And I know it's difficult for you when you're listening to a native English speaker to hear where one word ends and another begins, right? This is part of connected speech. But the good news is the way that sounds change in spoken English is not completely random. There are a few common rules and regular situations where linking occurs. So it's possible to study it, to learn it. Have you already checked out this lesson yet? Last week, I talked about consonant to vowel linking in spoken English, how words that end in a consonant sound link to the following word if it starts with a vowel sound. The trick to remember with linking is that we are talking about sounds, not letters. So don't let your eyes trick you. We're talking about sounds linking together. Speaking naturally in English is really only a skill that you can develop through practice yourself by listening to native English speakers regularly, imitating them, and by trying it yourself. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So get ready to practice out loud with me at home, okay? Like I said, last week we focused on consonant to vowel linking. Would you like a piece of apple? Would you like a piece of apple? That's consonant to vowel linking. Today, we are gonna concentrate on consonant to consonant linking. Small lake. So here we have a word that ends in the consonant sound, ooh, and the word following also starts in the same consonant sound. So it makes sense to pull together these sounds, right, so that they become one. It's much easier. Small lake. There's no pause there at all, no break in the sound. It's just one continuous sound. Small lake, small lake, small lake. And as much as possible, we want your spoken English to flow like this, for more sounds to be connected, rather than adding awkward pauses through your sentence. I went to Japan. 
went to, went to, went to. I went to Japan. Do you like my stylish shirt? <laughs> stylish shirt? Stylish shirt. Do you like my stylish shirt? <laughs> now, this all seems pretty straightforward, right? Consonant followed by the same consonant. You can push them together and make the sound flow quickly without pausing between those two sounds. Now, there are some consonants that can link to different consonants, which is a little unusual. But when that happens, the sound changes. It creates a different consonant sound. So let's look at an example. Would you buy it? Now, let's speed that up a bit to regular pace. Would you buy it? Would you? Would you? So can you hear that j sound in there? Would you? Would you? Now, if we just say would by itself, there's no j sound. There's also no j in you either, right? So the D at the end of the word would can link to the y at the start of you. But when we do this, it creates a new sound, the j sound. So actually, in any situation where one word ends in a d and it's followed by a word that starts with a y, often it can combine to create the j sound. Would and you, would you, could you, should you, did you, had you, do you. Do you wanna? Do you wanna? Do you? Do you wanna? So as the auxiliary verb do reduces down to just the d sound here, we can also link it, just like the other examples, to say do. Do you wanna? Do you wanna? And check out how that too reduces down to the schwa sound. Instead of to, it's t. The schwa is another important feature of fast, connected speech in English, in spoken English. So if you need to check out what the schwa is, maybe have a reminder, this whole lesson here focuses on the schwa sound. It's a good one to watch next. Now, there is another exception that we need to talk about here. Those times when a word ends in a t sound, and it's also followed by the y sound. So there is a change in these sounds when we link them together. The sounds t and y together can create ch. Did she hit you? Hit you? Hit you? Hit you? Did she hit you? Did she hit you? Don't you have one? Don't you becomes don't you? Don't you have one? Didn't you? Can't you? See, there are so many really common word combinations there. Ones that you can definitely start practicing right now, today, even in simple conversations. And there you have it. They are the simple principles of consonant to consonant linking in spoken English. But now, I think we should practice a little. Do you want to practice a little with me now? We're going to combine what you learned in this lesson with consonant to vowel linking from last week's lesson. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of revision too from that lesson. I'm going to add a sentence up on screen right here. And all you need to do is write the sentence with the links included so that you can practice saying it quickly and link the sounds together wherever you can, okay? Do that visually on the screen. We're gonna do the first one together, but for the rest of them, I want you to write your answers in the comments. And I'll come back and check if you've got them all right later on. All right, ready?
She hates sandwiches with avocado. So here in this sentence, the s at the end of hates pulls together with the s from sandwiches. Hates sandwiches. And the th sound can link to the following vowel sound. With avocado. With avocado. All right, now it's your turn. Listen to me say each sentence. Listen carefully for the linking sounds. And it's your turn. So write them into the comments. Write the words into the comments and make sure that you're practicing each one out loud as we say it together, all right? Did you get a new watch? Did you get a new watch? Where can we link here? You're right. Did you? Did you? We can link there. We can link getter. New watch. Did you get a new watch? Did you get a new watch? She's always saying she'll live to 101. She's always saying she'll live to 101. Where can we link? <laughs> she's always, definitely. She's always saying. She's always saying. She'll live. Hundred and, hundred and. So there's a cheeky little vowel to vowel link in there too, by the way, if you, if you know about those. To a, to a, to a. But that's next week's lesson. Make sure that you subscribe to the English channel and you click the bell so that I can tell you when that lesson's ready for you. We will focus on vowel to vowel linking next time. All right, last one. Do you want one of them? Do you want one of them? Where can we link? Where can we connect two consonants or even connect a consonant to a vowel? Yes, we can definitely reduce do you to ju. To be honest, that T as well will almost disappear. One, one, so we can definitely hear that stop T. My tongue is in the position of a T. One, but we don't release the air after it. That also makes it quicker, makes it faster to say words when we don't release the air after them. Do you want, do you want? We can link one and of together, the consonant sound to the vowel one of and native speakers may not even pronounce that z sound you could reduce all the way down to a schwa one one of them one of them or one of them do you want one of them do you want one of them do you want one of them nice job lessons like this one always require practice so please make sure you come back and review it regularly to remind yourself about how linking occurs in spoken English and actually use it while you practice. And if you want to practice right now, then go and check out that imitation lesson right there because it will help you to work on your pronunciation and practice connected speech. Or try something completely different. I'll see you in there.